Hi there, welcome back to another week and another tutorial. Um, let me just start by updating you on the um, the exhibition. Okay, I was I was up there, I popped up, I took another look around. I still have three paintings hanging which haven't sold, but look, we've sold three big paintings and I'm thrilled, I really am thrilled with that. There's still another week left, so who knows, you know, sometimes someone can walk along at the very last minute and buy a painting. So look, we're doing fly we're flying now, we're doing very well. We have three sales. Um, I still have the Bally Cotton Lighthouse one still hanging. So um, let's hope someone catch let's hope it just catches someone's eye. It only takes one person, doesn't it? So yes, it's going well. It's it's going very, very well. Um, so look in this in this week's tutorial I am gonna paint something a little different. Uh, some nice lilies. And I did a painting already on this and it turned out fabulous. I just want to show you this. It's just a single lily on its own. But I'm going to paint something with maybe three lilies going up at an angle. Um, a slight angle on the canvas. It's just something I found. So let me just take, turn the camera here so you can see. Um, so now, this is my canvas anyway. It's 16 by 12. That's what I'm going to use. And it's an upright. A limited palette. Just a couple of colours. And this is one that I painted um, only a couple of days ago and I'm really really happy with how it turned out so I was thinking maybe do something like this with a dark background but I will put three of them in now I have a picture on my phone here so that's what I was going to paint but I'm going to paint them so these these flowers now I'm going to paint them in this kind of a style okay and I'm going to show you how I would paint something like this and how I would attack a painting like this. Alright, so yeah, very, very nice um, portrait style. And we'll stick a frame on this when it's finished. Uh, so yeah, very, very, very nice. Um, now let me just turn the camera here so you can see me again. I have to change that bulb because that bulb is yellow. It's making my face look yellow, which is very, very annoying. But that's a bit better, is it? So let's um, have a bit of fun with this. Um, I thought as well. I thought as well. I should mention I'm taking part in a floral display uh, next week, and it's for Down Syndrome Ireland. Um, it's for uh, it's just a charity again. Um, they told me I can set up my table and uh, I can display some nice small little paintings like that lily now, for example. So I could display that now just on a phone without a frame um, in a couple of small little stands and stuff like that, just on my table and uh, try and sell a couple, you know, and I will donate a painting to the cause as well and they can raffle that off um, to try and get as much as they can for the uh, charity. So uh, it's a fundraiser. Lots of people displaying lots of different floral displays, uh, businesses, that type of stuff. So it's going to be a fun night. Um, I just thought I'd mention that anyway. I just said I'd throw it out there. It's in Silver Springs Hotel in Cork. Um, so yeah, I, I love getting involved in all these kind of things. It's, uh, it's great to give something back as well, I think. And, um, you know, all your support is fantastic. And your support keeps this, keeps this going as well. Um, and I really appreciate everything that you're doing for me. So um, I hope you enjoyed the Halloween tutorial. That was fun, wasn't it? Oh, God. I tell you, I had some job trying to get that gel out of my hair. I was about two hours scrubbing my head, and uh, it still wasn't out. So yeah, that was that was a bit of fun. So I'm glad you enjoyed that. So let me hook the camera up here now, and I'm going to have a bit of fun with this one. And I'm going to paint a lovely black, a dark browny black background on this first, and we'll go at the flowers then. Take our time then with some nice detail on the flowers. Yes. So uh, don't go anywhere. All right, here we are. Now, I should mention also the most important thing of any painting, and you should know this by now. Look, a cup of coffee, a nice cup of tea or coffee. I've coffee this morning. I just feel like a coffee every now and again. You know, let's, let's go. Right, I'm going to start putting some colours on my palette here. I put a little bit of titanium white out there already. Let me put more on this for you. So, titanium white, and I'll put the colours on your screen as well so you can see. I'll try not to get my head in the way. I'm going to take some Naples yellow which is a lovely opaque opaque colour. I'm going to take a little a tiny tiny bit of cadmium yellow. Now this is cadmium yellow pale. Uh, you can use just regular cadmium yellow as well. It's just a bit stronger uh, but the cadmium yellow pale I think is a nice bright yellow, nice rich yellow. 
I know it's, if you have lemon yellow you could use that. I'm going to put out some burnt umber for the dark background. Let me put more out actually. We're going to need a good bit of this. And I'm going to put out some ivory black. Now there are two different blacks. There's ivory black and lamp black. Um, I normally just pick up either one because they're both very similar. Uh, one of them is kind of slightly warmer. I would say the lamp black is probably slightly warmer than the ivory. Uh, but it doesn't matter. They're both kind of pretty much the same really. So, and we also have... Um, I did take a little touch of magenta, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I think what I might do is take a touch of burnt sienna. And this is really only for the centre of the flowers. It's just a tiny, tiny little bit. And we can add a bit of red if we want to as well. But I just wanted to kind of keep it limited. So a nice, easy tutorial for you now today. Uh, I suppose the most important part of this will be the drawing. So, um, oh yeah, I just wanted to show you my brushes as well. I want to sell these as a set, okay? Now you don't have to take the blender brush if you, prefer, if you have your own blender brush, but these are the brushes now that I'm um, selling. Look, a set of stubby brushes, a size 16 and a size 12. Um, and then the brushes I use for everything. They're lovely and soft when you get them first look. They're nice and soft, your typical flat synthetic, but when they really stiffen up and toughen up, they get really nice and uh, thick. Now let me find one here that's kind of already worn in. Yeah, there's kind of one or two that's kind of worn and now it's a bit thicker, you see? So it goes from that to that and then right down to that, look at that. And then you have lovely trees and all sorts of little things, grasses, and it's amazing what you can do with just, with just these, um, with this one brush. You can do trees, bushes, you can do grass, you can do clothes, you can do everything. So, um, they are the brushes I use, uh, pretty much these two, plus one or two other small, short ones, um, for instance. So I'd have a little short one like that. Simple, cheap, synthetic little flat brush for details. Um, but that's it. So these are kind of the three primary brushes that I would use. Nice soft blender brush and my two stubby brushes. So if you want these, I can get them to you, no problem. Just send me an email at stephenconway12 at gmail.com and I will get them to you, okay? Um, they're fantastic brushes, they really are, and they can't be found anywhere, I really, I tried everywhere. I cannot find them anywhere, except the one little art store in my city. Isn't that amazing? So I'll put my name on these, I think, eventually. Right, let's go. Um, pencil, I suppose we need a pencil, don't we? Nice sharp pencil here, and we need an eraser, nice putty rubber. And let me look at the picture. We have three lovely lilies, look. And I'm going to simplify this now. I'm just going to do it nice and simple. I think I'll start with the centre. Hmm, will I? Um, let's just pick a point. I'll pick a point, say, here. And that could be the centre. That could be the top middle of the centre flower, okay? The middle flower. So I'm going to come up like that and around. And we can adjust this now as we go, okay? I'm just being very, very rough now with this. Very, very quick. So it goes over like that. And it goes to a point, doesn't it? So that could be number one. Uh, we can bring number two just up around like this. The bottom one, rather. And I know there's a couple of you now who are probably experts in this field of flower painting. I'm not an expert, I'll be honest. Uh, but I like to try it from time to time. And uh, I'm sure you will give me some fantastic tips. I look forward to that. Okay, let's just very quickly come out like this. It's almost like a love heart, isn't it? It's quite nice. And... Let's just put a little lip on it, just like that. Um, Alright, so it just kind of comes down like that, and there's a piece in behind it. I'm just doing it very, very quick. And it kind of turns here, doesn't it? It cuts in front. And it almost disappears. You see? It's kind of a shadow. And this one... Uh, hmm. Now we can make these kind of bigger and smaller as we need. Okay? As we're going. 
Don't worry too much about getting it absolutely perfect first time. And we have a very strong shadow now being cast across that there, don't we? That's quite nice. I'm, gonna, I, 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 I'm looking forward to doing this lovely, lovely strong shadow here. And we have the underside of the flower here. I'm not sure what you would call it, but I'm not an expert in flowers. Put that there, and we put a big one under here. Nice big piece there. And then, well, just simplifying it, it's just a very, very rough sketch, that's all. This even comes out a bit more here, doesn't it? And we'll have this big one up here now. And it cuts across like that, doesn't it? And it comes down and it kind of curves a little bit then, doesn't it? And let's go a turn like this. Now we have this big one right in front of it here, look like that. Nice big petal and it comes over and it curves down like so. That's lovely, isn't it? That little lip, I love that. And it goes up and around like that. Hmm, we have to make it a bit bigger, would we? A bit wider. And we come over like this and then it kind of turns back very suddenly and it comes down into the flower. Then we have another little highlight which cuts in front of that and almost up like that. It's kind of shadow all here. This is all shadow. So I'm gonna show you now how I would <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna show you how I would approach something like this and kind of simplify um this type of a scene. So I have three very roughly sketched flowers down there, don't I? Very, very, very rough. And what I'm going to do next time is start filling in this dark background. Now, if you like, you could only you could just do one. So you could just do one like this if you want. Um, just take one of these flowers and even put an A4 sheet of paper around it. So then you have a nice single flower. And you could just draw that one and you could paint that one if you want because I know three flowers is probably a bit complicated for the beginners out there. Um, I'm just going to try it. I Look, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Let's just have a go. So, stubby brushes at the ready. I'm going to dip it into some turpentine, just turpentine, nothing else. Okay, that's all I use. From time to time I might use a little drop of linseed oil and that can help um, make it more creamy and soft and it slows the drying slightly as well but I hardly ever use it, I'll be honest it's just turpentine and I'm going to dip my brush into the turpentine just right in, I'm going to soak the brush then I'm going to dab the excess off with some tissue and go with my paint so it's damp, it's a damp brush and let's take some brown some nice opaque, very very thick burnt umber and let's take a bit of, now the background on that is very black isn't it? Uh, I don't know if I want jet black but I'll go a little dark to begin with and this will be quite transparent on the canvas see what I mean by that? so you can see right through right through the paint, it's very when it's tinned, even slightly you can see right through the paint onto the canvas so my <coughs> My goal right now is just to cover the canvas with very dark colour. Burnt umber and some black. And I'm going to go around the flowers only just very, very roughly, okay? Um, you could even go through the stalks underneath because I want to leave the crisp whiteness of the flower for painting. So ju just so that I don't have to be going over dark colours trying to brighten them up, which is a lot of work. So just go around the flower heads, that's all you have to do. And this one was only just the first coat. I am going to go over this again. So what I do is, <coughs> as I'm painting, now this is going to start kind of drying and setting on the canvas very, very slightly. I'll come back to it then in a couple of minutes and I will start going over it again. And the second layer will kind of stick a bit better then. So this, as you can see now what I'm doing, it's quite thin. It's very, very thin on the canvas. So 
what it does going around all the flower heads like so just leaving the main shape and I know Yovette is probably watching she's a fantastic floral painter I think it's Yovette I think I could be wrong now but one of my viewers is a fantastic um, floral painter and I'm sure she will be casting a stern eye over this painting um, you know it's, it's not something that I would paint all the time but I do love painting lilies in particular I think lilies are fantastic they're very eye-catching color very eye-catching flower and especially with a dark background like this they're fantastic and you know using only very basic techniques you can get really <coughs> lovely results I can hear a rattle here now somewhere and it's very annoying what is it? Uh, it's a, a big jar of brushes rattling away in the background huh? isn't that just no it's still there ah I got it it's just one of those little annoying rattles and I just cannot focus when I have something rattling in the background I don't know if you're like that but that's the way I am it can kind of get on your nerves after a while isn't that right but look I'm just going to continue with this burnt umber and black and every now and again I'm taking a little touch of turpentine just to dampen it very very slightly and let me see now where we're we going with this oh yes we're going around here I'm going to put a bit of green in the bottom actually later just a touch maybe a dark dark bluey green or something just to complement it so we have a very basic brown background on our painting don't we now I'm going to start adding just paint on its own so with my brush now it's fairly dry um, I'm just going to start taking some black and some thick brown so I have nice thick paint now and I'm going to come up and start going over this again very gently with that colour and I'm going back into my colour now after every couple of strides just to make it nice and rich and dark and then we will soften all of this with our blender brush it dark because it will show the whites of the flowers lovely and let's start taking some black on its own and we make it nice and dark down in one corner so I'm just using black and go along down here pulling that nice dark black into that brown see and the canvas sounds nice and wet that's the way I like it I like painting wet into wet for especially for subjects like this more black and you know what I'll take a touch of magenta just a touch I'd like to add a little bit of warmth into this so magenta and black that will give us a nice romantic kind of a romantic pink down at the very bottom here so I'm going back over now what I just painted just here and there I don't want a very flat kind of a colour all the way across the canvas so I'm going to leave some brush strokes here and there as well and it just adds a bit of movement to the painting I think you don't have to have it completely smooth all of the time I suppose but I will go over it very lightly here and there with the blender brush okay I'll put my brush down, I'll take my blender brush 
trying to find a nice soft one here now. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to mention to you about cleaning the blender brushes and how I clean them. So what I do is, if let's say for instance, right, I'm just going to soften this very gently here and there, look. Down at a side angle. And then we have a little bit of paint on our blender brush, don't we? Just on the outside of the brush. It's not completely right into the ferrule of the brush. It's not full with paint. It's just on the outside of the brush. So then what I'll do is, I'll show you now just in a sec, let me just soften some of this in and we can, I might start adding some bluey green or something down here in a moment. So at the end of the painting then what I'll do with this is, I will take some tissue, alright, like so, because someone was asking me about this. And I put a little drop of turpentine, even out of my bowl, look, just on my tissue. Okay, just a little drop, so you can see there's a wet patch on my tissue there. Then I will take my brush and run my brush across it like that. So the brush is not soaking then. It's not soaking up the turpentine. But the, brush, but the paint is coming off. See? So I'll do that a couple of times like that. Just keep going until you think it's relatively clean. Then turn it over to a nice dry part of the tissue. Give it a really good dry. Okay. And there we are. Ready for the next time then nice and soft still. You see? That's how I clean my blender brush. Simple technique, but it works. Um, right, what was I going to do? Ah, yes. I am going to put some green down in this corner. So, I'm basically just going to take some black. And I'm going to take a dab of yellow. I'm not going to go too bright with the green. Because it's very down, it's down in the depths, down in the dark shadows. See? And I'm going to work a little bit of green just in here and there as well. Just a little, and I'm using a dry brush now really, it's fairly dry. I'm not wetting my brush now from here on because the canvas is very wet. And I might even take a touch of burnt cyan, eh? So this is just adding a touch of green then just to indicate perhaps the impression of the shadow of a grass coming up or something going down into the bush. I don't want to be putting solid leaves and stuff like that in there. It's just a little tiny bit of green. Now let's go a little bit more yellow in this. And let's add a bit of, see, just a little bit of greeny colour just here and there. Again, it's just an impression, you see. There we are, and that'll do fine. All I do this is I just kind of flick the brush here and there, and that was it. No big deal. Job done. So we're pretty much now finished with this brush. Um, I was thinking perhaps a little light up in one corner, but hmm, I'm not too sure to be honest. I would like to darken it a bit, perhaps just up there. Let's take some black. I'll just work a little bit of black back in up there because I do want a very dark side really dark side now I'm just making sure now everything is going ok with that camera and work that in just paint on its own now nothing else and let me just come a little bit across here look there. And that is fine. That'll do absolutely fine. So my next my next job is I'm going to take a pointy brush and I'm going to wet that brush and take a little bit of white. Just a nice watery bit of white and I'm just going to redefine some of the outlines on those flowers. Just for my guide so I know where to go. Okay? Um, so we have this one down here kind of comes out like that and it comes around doesn't it like that I'm just doing it very loosely again just so I know where the flower was going where the outline was I could use my brush but I just want to do it properly I want to get it right ok so we have one there and the next one uh, now where was that? 
Hmm, you see, this is the tricky part. I'm going to go around here. I'm going to come down like that and around. Come down like that, cutting in front of it. Now I will, I will be painting this with easy techniques. I'll be showing you how to create a flower easily without having to go into too much detail. It'll just be a series of simple um, brush strokes. That's all. Very easy to follow brush strokes with flat brushes. Okay. Now this one. Let me see where does this one go. Um, hmm. Going to come down around here and it's going to turn and come around. Is this? Is that right? Yeah, I think that's probably all right, is it? We can adjust it as we go, you see. So let's leave it at that. Brushes down. Now I'm going to use three brushes for this next section. Um, my medium stubby, I have a new one here, I'm going to start with a new one. Medium stubby brush, I have another slightly smaller one and a nice small flat one. And that's pretty much the brushes I'm going to use. Now I am going to put one more colour on my palette. Uh, just for some shadows here and there. A little touch of cobalt blue. Just a touch, because we do have very subtle shadows just here and there. It's only a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit you need now, okay? Just a tiny bit. And uh, then just an extra bit of magenta on my palette. Just to get some nice cool shadows on this, warm shadows, rather. And I'm going to start with medium stubby brush. Now let's go and have a bit of fun. Let's start filling in now all of these. By the way, if you want to get rid of all this thick black paint, just dip a bit of tissue into some turpentine and just go along and scrape some of that off. It'll save you in the long run trying to cover all this down with white paint, you see? It just makes life a little easier. Now of course if this was acrylic you wouldn't have this problem. Because the acrylics would be dry. But then again, with the acrylics you can't blend very well, can you? You can add you can add aids to slow it drying and you can add these mediums to stop it drying for fast and so forth. But for me I just don't like adding too much medium into my my paintings. I like to keep it just natural, top and tie and nothing else. But it's entirely up to you, it's your own decision. Now, let's go. I'm going to dampen my brush again, just make it a little damp. And I'm going to use some titanium white. And a very, it's a very bright white, isn't it? So I'm going to take a touch of Naples yellow, and perhaps a touch, only a tiny touch of cadmium yellow. Just on its own. And that'll give me a very bright, luminous white. Now let's mix plenty of this because we've got a lot of this to do. Tiny, tiny bit of yellow there. We have a nice luminous white now. A very bright a hint of yellow in this. And I'm going to start... Um, hmm. I'm going to start here and start pulling the brush strokes downwards. So everything is curving down into the centre of the flower. Okay. And I'm basically just going to fill it with this white paint. So you notice I was picking up some of the brown. That's fine, don't worry about that. That's completely fine. And we have one filled in. Now I'm going to leave that um, for now, I think. Let me just think about this now for a moment. Let's go down and fill in this one here, shall we? So the very same now, dampen the brush very slightly. 
take plenty of white plenty of white now you do need to add a bit of thinner to this because this titanium white is very thick and pasty a touch of cadmium yellow and let's start filling in this one now I know we have a bit of shade in all of this but I'm just going to fill everything in with this bright colour and I'll start going over the shadows then later let's just fit all of this in so I hope now I'm making this easy enough for you to follow I'm just going to keep it simple I'm going to keep it all very very simple and it's just a series of basic brush strokes that's all so see I'm going to pull everything down more here now and it's picking up a lot of brown but that doesn't matter I think, I think that gives it um, texture and a bit of life you know picking up these different shades of colours so I'm, I don't mind I really don't mind about that dampen my brush again take a hint of Naples yellow for a change and come up here and let's fill this one in you can leave the first coat dry if you wish by all means um, I just like kind of working continuously like this wet into wet all of the time that's just the way I've kind of learned really So now, I have my flowers filled in, okay, like so. And that's pretty much all the shapes done, the main shapes filled in. Alright, you would agree? Um, next now I might start adding some shadows to these so just finding where the shadows lie so for example we do have a bit of shadow in here don't we and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little touch of a kind of a mauve colour perhaps so I might take a touch of blue now do you want me to zoom in for this or do you want me to see mixing I'll zoom in slightly will I just a little on one and you can see how I'm doing this then so I'll take a touch of blue tiny touch some white tiny touch of magenta and I'm going to put that nice mauve colour just on the cusp here now that's a bit light I'll make it a bit darker that nice mauve colour now just where the flower is beginning to turn see like so and it comes down here then and it disappears down into the flower and then I'm going to take some black tiny tiny bit of black and I'm going to start deepening that very gently and also we have a bit of a shadow here don't we And as it comes down, I'm going to take a touch of brown, perhaps. In fact, let's take a touch of brown with a touch of yellow. It's kind of a greeny, there's a very greeny colour down in the very centre of the flower, just in there. So I'm just going to flick it up. And soften it into that colour. So what's happening is, the centre piece of the flower is reflecting out onto the petal and it's almost a very kind of a greeny colour isn't it so there we go 
and I will darken things now as I'm going. I'll very, very slowly darken all these little colours. And let's go around the top here again very slightly and darken that. So I'm giving, I give my brush a clean each time I do this. And we have a very dark kind of a colour then um, coming down in here, don't we? So where it kind of turns. All I'm doing is looking at this direction of the shadow on the petal. So I can see the turns here and it kind of just comes down then, doesn't it? Okay. So you can see now I'm slowly building up, very very slowly building up colour. But I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush, just to get some more detailed work in here. I'll take some blue and some magenta. I'll take a touch of black as well. Nice rich thick colour. And just in here, I want to give that a bit more of a hit just in there look okay and also just along here and you're probably finding this now very complicated but I wanted to show you an in-depth flower um, this is how I would paint a flower like this just adding little touches of colour here and there um, okay and I'd add a touch of Touch more yellow into this in here. Okay. Now what I do next is take my soft brush and I'm going to just soften some of these down. And I'm pulling them in the direction of the flower petal. So it's twisting kind of downwards like this into the center. So that's the direction I'm going to pull the paint, see? So now you can begin to see the flower come to life, can't you? Now what should I do next to really brighten this up? Okay, what should I do? With my small flat brush, I'm going to take some bright uh, white with a hint of yellow in it, okay? Just a hint. Loads of white. So loads of thick paint on my brush. Okay? It's mostly white. And I'm going to cut in front of this down here. And that will push everything else then back into the distance, okay? See? And then give it a wipe on the tissue just to keep clean off the dirt. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go around this and really show off that edge up there. Now, it gets very bright up here, doesn't it? So let's pull some of that, like so. And I'm only doing a couple of brush strokes at a time and then I'm cleaning my brush. And that's keeping the colour nice and bright and crisp. Let's go down here and do this. So now you can see it's pushed all the shadows back down into the flower hasn't it? And that's what I was trying to achieve. Now I think I'll make this a two part tutorial only because this is, there's going to be a bit of work in this and my camera, I don't want to record the file too big because it'll be a nightmare trying to upload it so I'll just do it in two parts I think so there we go and I'll put a little bit of light down in here. So 
so it's almost transparent you can almost see the light coming through the flower and as well we have a little bit in here don't we so I'm just getting a very sharp kind of sudden brush strokes and then I'll just gently soften some of them with my little brush okay just gently Hello, how is that looking? And we will refine some of the highlights later. But there's one piece now I just want to put in, and that's a little what would you call this stuff in the center? I, I don't know what it's called to be honest. But I'm just going to put that in with some cadmium yellow and some little touch of burnt sienna. So look with my small flat brush or a pointy brush, it's up to yourself some burnt cyan and a little cadmium yellow and just this little thing just in the centre here, look just a little suggestion very thick paint, I'm just dabbing it around ok and in fact with a pointy brush, let's put some shadow on this as well so a touch of black look and little touch of black on the dark side dot 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 just dab away there you go job done, Bob's your uncle and I'm going to add a touch of that colour now to reflect onto the leaf just or the petal just here and there, look I'm softening it kind of gently outwards onto the flower see so now you can understand what I was trying to achieve and I'm not entirely happy with this shadow here um, I might carve, look I carve it I carve it very slightly so it joins up with this one and it becomes one now that's a bit better isn't it so next I want to put a little shadow just under just underneath here there's a little shadow just there and let's take a bit of black in that and then with some crisp white I'm going to redefine the edge of that there so this is one flower and it's pretty much the same principle for all the flowers and I'm going to brighten that just there um, you know I'm kind of I'm keeping the brush stroke sort of solid but at the same time I'm kind of blending everything together does that make sense? there we go and a little green tip then with a little small green tip just on the edge of this don't we how's that? and that's one let's leave it at that and we can come back and finish the details then uh, later on so now moving on to flower number two I'm going to zoom back will I zoom back for you or will I zoom in? I don't know um, I'll just go here look okay is that okay for you? I want to show you what I'm doing you see so I will take my small brush again and we have again a big shadow being cast across here don't we but first I want to just lighten this area here there's a lot of light up there So I'm going to take titanium white, a touch of cadmium yellow, and I'm going to lighten this part here, just coming around here like that. Then clean the tissue, go back into it again, and let's come right down here, 
like so. And this is very bright. I'll probably go over these sections again once the painting is dry with some real crisp, bright, yellowy white. Just to get those highlights really bright. That's all I'll do. I don't know if you can hear that rain outside, but it is pelting down outside. It's lashing outside the studio. Oh, a great day for painting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Now, um, I'm going to pull this down very gently into the flower. I'm cleaning my brush every couple of turns, all right, to keep it nice and clean. I'm going to start adding some shadow to this area. So I'll take some blue, I'll take a touch of magenta, and I'll take a touch of black. And I'm going to try that now. Uh, it's kind of more greeny, I suppose, on the picture, but I just want to try and get a nice shadowy colour up here. I'm going to pull it gently downwards into the painting. Look, very gently. And I'm almost just kind of dragging it over the top of the canvas. Does that make sense? Very, very gently over. Now I'll just darken this one slightly up here as well. There we go, that's better. Just slightly. Well, I have to colour on my, my brush. I'm just going to do that one as well. Okay, that's quite nice. You see, I like the complementary colours. They're very complementary. And then, with the same brush, don't clean it. Let's take a bit of that kind of greeny, yellowy colour. And let's just pop some of that in. Down at the bottom. Because you can see there's a very kind of a warm glow at the bottom of the flower, isn't there? And that's the reflection from that centre in, inside in the flower. And it's reflecting outwards onto the flower. So, um, yeah, it's creating a lovely soft kind of mixture of colours in there. And I'm going to soften all this together now with my blender brush in just a moment. But I'm going to take some burnt sienna because it's nice and warm just in the centre there and also it's reflecting a little bit across here onto this so then I'll take my soft brush and just soften all of this very gently down together to create a very soft effect and it's all mixing lovely together look see isn't that wonderful fantastic I love it look at that absolutely gorgeous now I'll go a little warmer again, so I'll take some burnt sienna, even just burnt sienna on its own, just a tiny touch, and I'll just make it a little warmer, just down here and there. And I'll soften it again. And then I'm going to create the centre of the flower. So let's create the centre. Get some yellow with some burnt sienna. Little bud sticking up in the centre there. And I'm going to create a shadow on this. Just in around there. Dab, 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 nice and gently. And then a little bit of black just down at the very bottom there, look. Make it nice and dark. So, how's that coming on? That's looking pretty good. What I want to do actually is just fix that little area just there. So, I'm just going to sharpen up. Just sharpen up some of the darks there. And do the same on the other side.
No. So let's leave that one for now and let's move on to the last one. So we're going nicely now, aren't we? Very, very, very nicely. So let me just take a look. We have a very strong shadow up around here now, don't we? Now you can see how easy it was just to create those things. It's just it's it's all about the the um the brush stroke, isn't it? So this one here now, I'm just gonna roughen that up just a little bit there. Because I don't want it to look like a separate piece, it's part of the same leaf. Um but I don't want it to look like it's completely separate either. Uh, so let me just try and soften it, even just a little, there. So it's kind of softening back into the leaf up here then you see. Now I know it's different than the picture, but you know, I want it to look right. And down into this one now we have a shadow again on this, very strong shadow around the front here don't we. And what I'm going to do is take some of that shadow colour, and I'm going to flick it forward because you can see on the picture those little the brush strokes are kind of turning like this aren't they very slightly see and that's why I love using the flat brushes for these because the flat brushes give you a lovely sharp edge and um, it's fantastic for this kind of work you can see already now we have a lovely shadow there don't we and then moving up let me take a bit of brown actually in this Moving up here, we have this shadow turning downwards into the flower, and so it disappears then, and it kind of comes around, and it gets very strong then, it gets really strong just at one point, doesn't it? So let me take some blue and some mauves again, uh, a little bit of black even, and let's get very dark just here, see? Isn't it lovely now that you can blend like this with the oils? It's fantastic, it really is. And it's very dark then as well, just around here. See? It's a very dark shadow, just kind of on that line there. And you can soften this now with your blender brush as well, by the way. So you can see now I'm kind of creating the curve of that leaf just there and I'll, I'll, I'll add a little shadow just around here on the leaf and a little bit coming across just here and there so I'm using the brush now you see the flatness of the brush to create the kind of indents on the leaf or on the, the, the petal, I keep saying leaf, it's not a leaf, it's a petal, god almighty I'm very bad, aren't I? Very bad altogether. And we have a little shadow now up. Okay, let's just darken this very slightly. And I'm going to soften this one out down into the petal. And it's going to start getting green again. Just in here. Only very slightly now. So I've added a touch of green onto my brush there with some white. See, it's just a very hint, light hint of kind of a green coming down there it's sort of a bluey green does that make sense because these petals are very transparent and of course that piece in the center is reflecting light outwards around the, um, the petal now I'm going to take a little of that yellow and again the same as what we did earlier just going to start adding a little touch of the yellow into the petal here and there. It's going to soften from the bottom upwards. Isn't that lovely? And I'm very happy now how this is turning out. It's turning out lovely. So you can see I've used the same colours now throughout the painting. And I think that's the key, I suppose, to a good um, composition using the same colours throughout and it kind of ties everything together then doesn't it now I'm just touching up little bits here and there that's all 
we go along and do some detailed work in a moment. I'm just getting everything kind of filled in. And we have a little shadow around here as well. Now it's a kind of a greeny, it's a kind of a greeny shadow, isn't it? So a little bit of blue and a tiny touch of black. I'm just going to add that tiny little greeny blue kind of a shadow just along here. I might add a touch of it in here as well, and a touch around there. There, now we're, we're coming on nicely, aren't we? Now I'm going to do a very light um, bit of white, very crisp white, catching this just here and there, alright? So I'm just going to flick. around and following the direction of the leaf, you see? The curvature of the leaf. A very, very bright highlight just catching that there. And don't forget, clean your brush every time. And let me see, we have a very crisp, kind of a white, coming around the corner here, and coming down, give it a little wiggle, alright. And that's separating those two petals, isn't it? And I'm going to make it, I'm using very dry paint now for this by the way, it's very very dry, there's no thinners whatsoever now with this paint, it's just I'm picking up dry bits of paint. And I'm just going to darken just along in there, very, very gently, just a little. And I'm going to put in my little centerpiece. That's what it's called, the centerpiece, yes, we call it a centerpiece. And there's only a small one, but I'm going to make it slightly bigger, look. I want people to see it. And some burnt, burnt sienna at the bottom of it. I'm just dabbing now, that's all. See? Dab, dab, dab. And then a little black on the very bottom. These pointy brushes are fantastic, these flat brushes. I love using them just for that. And I'm going to add some of that colour then around the flower just here and there. It's ref again, it's reflecting onto the petal. Can you see this all right? You can? You can. And I think then I might switch to my small pointy brush and I'm going to take a little shadow colour just for the back of that. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit of black there, a tiny bit of black and a little bit of a shadow kicking in just there. And soften it out. And we have the same with the one above it, don't we? We have a lovely kind of a shadow. Let's take a touch of yellow actually in this. It's a very dark kind of a green, isn't it? And we have a lovely shadow coming around here like this. In behind that petal. And I put a little bit of a darker one then. Okay, so it's just a nice little separation, that's all. And I'm going to go back to my small flat brush again. And what I'm going to do is just here, I'm going to hit that with some nice crisp light colour. So a little bit of cadmium yellow with some white, a nice crisp bright whitey kind of a colour. And around the front of it as well. So let's, let's go on now, let's just do it here. And I call in front of that, like so. So a little bit of cadmium yellow makes a big difference. It just really brightens that white up not nicely. It's like a really bright sunlight kind of a colour. 
See? And this is a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun with this kind of a painting. And I lighten it very slightly in the middle again because I don't want to lose the whiteness of the petal. Again, the petals are white and I don't want to lose that whiteness, if you know what I mean. Um, okay, and very bright around here. And I will go over this one again later because it's just mixing with the colour underneath. So I'll probably let it dry for a little bit. And every now and again stand back. Don't forget to stand back and look because you can see exactly where they're going wrong. So I'm going to put some more bright around here. A nice sunlight colour. And then perhaps go up to this one up here. And I'm not happy with this area. It's very bland and I don't know. It's just not working for me. So I'm going to take some of that white colour, that bright colour, and add a little of it just in there. So the light is kind of catching slightly. And the same um, around here. So it's just thick paint on its own and it really is making a difference. And also we have a little, little bit there. And then with some white I'm going to go along just to the edge of this and pull a little bit in. Just like that. Giving it all a bit more drama, a bit more movement. So this is me now just going around with some final kind of final details I suppose you could call it and I want to add a bit of green to the end of this one here so I'm going to put that now just in front of this close one there I put a bit of yellow just under it here. And how's all this looking? Let's get some now let's get some stalks in. Lovely stalks and then we can focus on some of the final details. Alright? Okay, let's do this. Stalks. We have some yellow. Again a dry brush is all you need. Some yellow and a little blue and let's start getting these things in here I'm just going to keep it nice and simple now, alright there that can be one let me get more yellow on my palette here I'm going through a lot of yellow and then I'm going to take some yellow, with a little Naples yellow, and add a little hint of light here and there on that star, on that little piece just there. Right, let's move on to our next one. I'll just clean my brush with tissue now all of the time, that's all I'm doing. And let's take a bit of blue. We get a nice bright green. In fact, I'm going to darken the ones at the bottom because they're in more of a shadow, aren't they? Alright, yes, that's a bit better. And I'll darken the sides of these. And now we're going to pull this stalk right down into that depth down in there. 
and it's just going to literally disappear down into the, uh, the darkness underneath. See? You see, you know how easy I'm doing this, it's just I'm keeping everything very simple. And the flatness of the brush is creating the lovely, you see, little marks, I'm just putting little flicks here and there. And now what I'll do is I'll switch to a small pointy brush and I'm going to put some lights in. Get some nice highlights. So for example, just here. Just flick a little light here and there. And let's take a bit of blue into that. Okay, nice with a light blue, and let's hit that just on one side. So the blue highlights now will give this thing, will give this painting, um, nice depth. So I'm putting blue down at the bottom then, you see? Blue highlights. And then I'm going to put a very dark green. So let's take some black and some yellow on the back here. Okay, some black and some blue as well, even just in underneath here, because that's going to be a very strong shadow in there, isn't it? And a bit of brown. In fact, no, I'll take a bit of black. Put a bit of black just there where they meet. I'm just doing this kind of very easily now. I'm just trying to keep it simple for you beginners. I'm not going to bother you with too much detail. Okay. I just want to keep it simple. Now bit of dark on that side. Let's get some blue actually. Put some blue in here. And a bit of black. My dark shadows just under there and just along here. And then some lights. Let's get some nice lights going. A little bit of blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. And, okay, we'll have some reflection from the flower just on the back. And we have the same here. There's a source of light coming from somewhere there. But you can see it. So I'm going to put it in just a little bit. So have you enjoyed this tutorial? I think it went very well. And I'm, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy with the tutorial so far. It's turned out lovely, hasn't it? Some nice Carla lilies. And give it a try. As I said, just even try one if you want. Just put a little piece of paper around one of the flowers and just try that. Okay. I'm going to pull them down now just gently into the bottom of the painting. Look, so they disappear. And they soften out into the bottom of the painting. Now, how's that? And I'm just going to take my pointy brush now and start pulling up some, in some little details just here and there. So let me zoom in out to the photograph for you here, for the painting rather. 
and show you. Right, I'm going to get some crisp white with a hint of yellow in here. I want some nice bright colour here now for this. Thick paint on its own, okay, lots of thick paint. And I'm going to start separating some of these. I'm going to start getting some of the real bright highlights in. Okay, clean my brush again. And then come around up here. So, just flicking it down, softening them in together, and I put a little bit out here. I'll cut in front of that. Isn't that lovely? Nice bright colour. And then I just sharpen some of these ones. I just want to get that nice bright rich highlight. That's all. And okay, a little bit here. I'm not even looking at the photograph now, I'm just kind of going my own here at the moment. That's all. And we have a nice bright crisp one just there. So it's been a lot of fun and thank you very much for joining me. Now I do have a frame, I'm going to put a frame on this. Oh yeah, frame and all. I want to show you what it looks like with the frame. Just let me get one or two small little details done here. How is that? I'm pretty happy now with all of this. There's one other little patch of light that I want to do. And that is just inside, just a little bud here, just to catch the tips of that with some light. Okay, you see? Just a little. And then let's stand back and have a look at this. Now, I'm going to zoom right back for you. Let me zoom right back here, right back to the back of the studio. And let's put a frame on this. There we go. I have a frame back here, which I finished earlier, of course. Let me move the phone. And now, what do we think about this? Well, 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 look at that. Isn't that stunning? And I'm very, very happy now how, how, how that turned out. I'm very happy. Let me zoom in here now, close for you, so you can see. So you can see where I just put the little highlights there. Just a couple of small highlights here and there, just to really catch, catch your eye, and just really bring it to life. Okay. Isn't that lovely? So do try it, have a go see what you think. And I'd love to see your work. So please do email your work to me at stephenconway12 gmail.com And I'm going to turn the camera here now so you can see me and I can talk to you. There we go. No? Done? I enjoyed that, that was absolutely fantastic. That one I'm really proud of. I'm, I'm relieved that it went well. I thought I was going to make a mess of it, to be honest. So if you're a floral painter, please give me some tips. Uh, give me your advice, give me your criticisms, give me a compliment. I'm open to compliments from time to time. And uh, let me know what you think. So thank you so much for this, um, for joining me this, this week. We'll keep going with this, um, I'm, you know, 
flowers are nice, I like painting flowers, maybe something different the next time. So, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope you've got some hints and little inspiration I suppose, or some encouragement. Just keep it simple, nice and simple, and don't, you know, don't be trying to make it exactly like the photograph. If it's slightly different, who cares? It's a painting, alright? It's only paint. Just, um, as long as you are happy with the painting, that's all that matters. All right, so go off and get some, go off and get some paints, get a nice cup of tea, and uh, thank you so much. Again, if you want those brushes, stephencarmel12 at gmail.com. And uh, again, thank you so much, patrons, for your support. Uh, another lovely tutorial coming very soon for all of you. So God bless, and I will see you next week.